Hello, and welcome to Algorithmic Autobiographies. This event is part of the inaugural Sussex Festival of Ideas, a dynamic and engaging programme of talks, events and activities. The festival is produced by the newly formed School of Media, Arts and Humanities at Sussex University. This event is being recorded and will be posted to the Sussex Festival of Ideas website after the festival. Live captioning is available and can be activated by pressing the live transcript button on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. We welcome your questions and comments via the Q&A panel also at the bottom of the screen and these will be responded to at a certain point you'll be given lots of in help and in instructions soon from Tanya and Sophie. A member of the festival's team might contact webinar attendees for their feedback after the event. If you do not wish to be contacted, please email the festival's producer or a member of the festival team to opt out of these communications. You can find how to contact them on the about section of the festival website. So it's now my great pleasure to hand over to Tanya Camp and Sophie Bishop, who are going to lead this really intriguing event. Thank you, Margareta. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, welcome to our workshop today. I'm just going to share my screen before I do anything else. Um, see if I can see again. Can you see the slides? Yeah. Can you see them on present? They're on the presenter view rather than the PowerPoint view. Like as in, you can see all of the slide and not the weird bits around the end. When, yeah, you know, I can just see looking at PowerPoint. Okay, great. Um, hi, my name's uh, Tanya Kant and I'm a lecturer uh, in media and film, media and cultural studies, di uh, brackets digital media um, at the University of Sussex. Um, and I'm co-presenting this workshop today with uh, Sophie Bishop. Um, Sophie, do you wanna just say hello? Hi, I'm Sophie Bishop. I am very recently, as of last week, a lecturer in cultural and creative industries at the University of Sheffield. Um, yes, and we are here today to do a workshop on algorithmic autobiographies and fictions and uh, writing and also drawing with your digital self. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an overview about the why we're doing this workshop and how it feeds into our research. So we both research digital media. Um, we're both interested in how algorithms intersect with um, everyday life and identity practice. And so this research project is actually part of a bigger project called Demystifying Data Profiling. Um, and basically, if you want to, so part of this project is uh, part of this workshop today after me and Sophie have introduced you to some of the key ideas that we need to know before we meet and greet our algorithmic selves we're also going to be asking you to draw a picture of your algorithmic self and um, write a story of your day of a day out with your algorithmic self um, so please do have a pen and paper um, at the ready to do these things no artistic uh, experiences required, no previous writing experiences required, and you don't need to know anything about data either. What we do need you to have ideally is a social media account or a Gmail account, but even if you don't have these things, you can still participate in this workshop. Um, the workshop, as I was saying, is part of a wider research project, which is looking at how algorithms kind of intervene in everyday identity practice. If you uh, would like to, we would love it to be able to include your writings and drawings in the project. If that's something that you're interested in doing, um, please email me um, and I, my email will be available um, as part of the slides, but also it's on the information sheet that I'm just about to put in the chat. How do I... Oh. Can anyone else put it, can one of the panelists put those two links in the chat by any chance? Because I now can't find the chat. <laughs> oh, here, uh, the Q&A, here we go. Uh, that's how we go. Right, so 
That is a participant information sheet that's now gone into the chat, which everyone should be able to see, um, that just goes into a few details about the, pro about the project. Um, the good news is if you don't want to participate in the project, you can still participate in this workshop. Um, there's no, that you, it's completely voluntary. If you want to send us your drawings and writings after the workshop, then they will be included. If you don't do that, then they won't be included, but you're still obviously invited to participate and we would love it if you, if you would. Um, so we would normally do this um, in real life, not that, I mean, Zoom is real life, but in person, um, at, or we would do it in a Zoom meeting where people would have their mics and cameras on and the chat would be a little bit more open. Um, we don't have that today. So what we're gonna ask you to do is if you have any um, comments or questions, please put them in the Q&A and um, we'll, we'll get to them as soon as we can. Um, and you know, if we ask you anything during the uh, session, we'll give you an, a chance to respond to us in, in some way. It would probably be at first through the Q&A and then we will be able to um, speak to you with your mic on or something like that. So this is our first time doing this in a webinar. We are experimental um, astronauts on the Zoom frontier. So um, please bear with us um, as, we, as we explore this exciting new space. Um, okay. So to get on to the actual workshop. So um, if you've ever been online, which you may have done, um, you may have seen a cookie notice that looks something like the one I've just put up on screen. Mm. Or you may have seen one that looks like this, or like this, or like these. Um, yes, as we go about our daily business online, um, part of the new GDPR laws is that uh, the websites that you visit are now legally required to tell you if they want to track you via third part, via cookies and algorithms and data um, to give you a more personalized experience of the web. That's what these uh, cookie notices say um, about the fact that they are tracking people. Um, so mostly this is around targeted advertising. When you consent to one of these, if unless you change your settings, you're more than likely be consenting to being tracked and algorithmically profiled by data trackers who are interested in knowing different parts of who you are. So your identity interests, your gender, your location, the language that you speak, um, even your political views, there's a whole host of data that can be tracked in this way. Um, so we'll have seen these cookie notices and for many people, there will be a sense of uh, wanting to protect your privacy, but also research shows um, increasingly that we've kind of reached a bit of a whatever moment in this ubiquitous state of being tracked and asked for consent. So what I'm showing you here is a, is a real consent button. Um, it is from a satirical news site, but this is a real cookie consent button. And I think it encapsulates quite well this sort of whatever moment. Um, you know, we are, we are tired of being tracked. Um, and even though we don't like it, we tend to just relinquish um, I think it's something like 96% of web users don't read the privacy policies that they are consenting to when you accept these. Um, and I know that because I also get cookie fatigue, I don't always look at the things that I am consenting to. Sophie. Yeah, um, I can definitely speak to that cookie fatigue and even the, uh, I found out recently, even the like website that describes what meaningful consent means in terms of GDPR, if you go on the EU website, then uh, the strap line at the bottom says, we assume that you have agreed to consent to cookies by visiting this page. So clearly, even the people who are making these policies don't really understand or sustain what meaningful consent might mean. Um, so yeah, as Tanya was saying, we've got to this ubiquitous point of being tracked. And I think this is something that maybe there's more sort of cultural awareness and, and journalistic coverage of in the past couple of years. I think maybe prior to uh, um, like scandals like the Cambridge Analytica scandal for Facebook, people were aware that some of their data might be used to track them. 
but not how that data can sort of flow through all of the different places that you are online and how difficult it is to practically opt out. So Antonio Garcia Martinez was the first ads targeting product manager for the Facebook ads team. And he sort of gave an account that said, Facebook can now find you on whatever device you've ever checked in on. It can exploit everything that retailers know about you and sometimes even track your in-store cash only purchases. That loyalty num card is tied to a phone number or email for a reason. And you know, you do have like, although it's anonymized, you do have a, new, a unique tracking referencing number that will link together your various IDs. Um, you know, if you sign into anything with Facebook, but also if, for example, applications on your phone uh, use Facebook software development kit, then um, all of the data from that app will be shared with Facebook, whether you've connected your profile to it or not. So it's, you know, it's very difficult to escape. Although we're not trying, this is, a, this is you know, an empowering and, uh, and sort of positive workshop, but this is, you know, sort of the dire state of, of affairs that, ki that kind of is uh, <laughs> happening. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so yeah, so what we want to do is start to try and delve into this murky world of ad tracking um, as um, everyday web users, neither myself or Sophie, although I'm making a bit of an assumption here, but I don't think either of us have ever done much programming. So, um, so yeah, we are, we are not the, um, the data experts to go in and be able to hack the system to find out about everything that Facebook and Google know about us. What we can do, however, is try and use those user-friendly tools, the limited ones that are um, accessible to try and just find a little glimmer of our, um, our algorithmic identities. And this is the term that um, others such as Kylie Jarrett have used to um, describe the kind of profiles that sort of haunt us as, as, we, as we use the web. So those, yeah, those data sets that kind of do and don't reflect who we are. Um, so yeah, if I go on to say my Facebook, Facebook gives me a, um, a an option if I click on an ad to see why am I seeing an ad that I've been delivered on Facebook. If I click through um, a certain set of click throughs that I'm going to go through in a minute with you, um, I will be able to see certain things about how I am being profiled and tracked by Facebook's targeting system. So the first thing that I see when I go on my Facebook um, ad settings uh, is this, manage your ad topics. And the uh, manage ad topics, so it doesn't say your ad topics, which is kind of important here. But the ad topics that I see are alcohol, parenting, pets, social issues, election or politics. When I first looked at these, I thought that they were personalized to me because I've been looking at the ad settings page for a very long time. When I first looked at this, I thought, oh, Facebook thinks I like alcohol, parenting, pets and social issues. And they've got at least three out of four right. I'm not going to say which ones. Um, but then Sophie has been working, um, doing some research around Facebook's ads kind of um, processes and she can explain actually what I, what we're looking at because when you go on your ad topics I think it's very likely I or certain that you will see the same four ad topics that, are, that we're looking at right now is that right Sophie? Uh, yeah so Facebook I mean so Facebook are very aware of the critiques that are made about uh, tracking and um, data valence and you know they are, they're all very aware that people aren't necessarily very happy with those uh, with a lot of their practices so they're trying through like different measures to at least create the impression that people have more agency over their advertising uh, so you know and part of this is making visible the ad topics that you're interested in which is what enables us to do this workshop today but there's four topics that they think are sensitive for various reasons. So, for example, alcohol, people who are recovering from addiction or maybe have problematic relationships with alcohol, people who've experienced parenting loss. Um, I don't know if anyone who's uh, sort of embroiled in politics is actually going to turn those off. But, you know, I guess if there's certain social issues that can be triggering or upsetting to people, you can choose to see fewer ads. So Facebook, in some ways, is trying to like add more agency Although, uh, you know, as 
Tanya said, even people researching this don't know that this is this feature is here. And you know, you're not going to stop seeing ads, it's just see fewer. Um, and you know, these sensitive topics, there's a lot more different sensitive topics that you could talk about, and lo like lumping social issues in with politics, for example you know, a lot of that's not the same thing and isn't talking about the same thing. So yeah, there's much to say about it. We don't have time, but this, but it's also relevant that this option's there for people who use Facebook, that you can see fewer ads uh, based on these topics. Um, so if you have a question, why pets? I don't know. I was thinking about that, but I think some people are very like traumatized by the loss of their pets. Like when my cat died, I mean, I was targeted with loads of like adverts for cat stuff. So that seems to be like kind of an easy option. I don't know, it is, but that is strange. <laughs> I don't know why. Thank you, yes. And it's also interesting to see that we've got these four sensitive topics and yet I can think of quite a few other ones that are not kind of represented here. And it, you know, so we can yeah. think about um, the fact that even when we are given these controls, they are restricted through the frameworks that Facebook think should be demarcated as sensitive. Right, so, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I would love to. Gambling's not on there, right? And I'm lucky to say I'm not a gambling addict, but if I if I was, I would certainly want to turn that off. But um... Yeah, well, I want to turn off diet adverts because that's like literally 90% of the things that I see. But yeah, absolutely. Cool, okay, so so we've, we've managed to unpick a little bit about what is happening when we glimpse our ad preferences, our ad profiles. Um, so to get back onto the topic of what my ad preferences are, what my algorithmic self might look like, um, there are still uh, mechanisms on Facebook and also we'll be talking about Instagram and Google to be able to see um, categories of interest that are specifically flagged as of relevance to, to you or me. So I'm gonna just run through some of mine that I checked just earlier this week. Okay, so these are the nearly endless um, categories that, that change. They change a lot, but they're, they're, there, they're there at the moment. So I've probably got about 600 different categories. Um, so I've got vegetarianism, barbecue, healthcare, nature, Matalan, gift. All of these are fairly banal. I would be kind of, I'm not that surprised to see that my algorithmic self is related or associated with these categories. Um, as I start scrolling down my ad interests or my own profile, I can I start to feel a little bit more uneasy or, or kind of it's interesting to me what kind of thing, what kind of person I seem to be if I kind of um, scroll down. So here we've got Halloween, retirement community, Kickstarter, parenting, dog food, dogs and dresses. Well, you know, I do love dogs. So that's definitely one that I would say does reflect elements of my identity. I like Halloween, although I would say I'm a bit old for the old Halloween parties. Retirement communities, I would say I'm a bit young for, I hope. Um, and then we've got some other things like um, parenting comes up a lot for me, um, which I find quite interesting because I'm not a parent. Um, and yet it's something that is reflected quite often in when I check my ad settings. Um, we've got things like video games. Yes, that does um, reflect me. I would say I've got sustainability. Um, I'm interested in that. And then we've got a rather kind of, uh, we've got a surprise beef um, coming in. So I've had vegetarianism and now all of a sudden I've got beef and, and hunting. So my, my algorithmic self seems torn between um, uh, the sustainable lifestyle and then wanting to go and, and hunt some some tasty animals. Um, I've got activism in there, which also kind of rings true to, to part of myself. Um, donkey, so things get really weird after a while. And as I scroll down and down, um, the categories of interest make less and less sense. So, you know, the donkey singular. Am I interested in, in one donkey? I'm, I'm not sure I am. I don't know I haven't met one for a while, um, so I don't really feel that I've got much reflected in that categorization. Bubble shooter, I don't know what that is. Um, a sea captain, I mean, <laughs> I like the idea that my algorithmic self is interested in being a sea captain, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it was something that I was interested in. And then we get really obscure, we get things like face, 
which again, it doesn't really, it's not indicative of what it actually means to be interested in this category. I don't know what my algorithmic self being interested in faces actually means here. And then finally, fear. So apparently my algorithmic identity is interested in fear. Um, if, you know, how, how Facebook is gonna market or personalize that fear to, to me, I don't know. Um, I've also had other emotions come up on this long list of ad categories, including one of them was, I think I've had like happiness and pride, but I also got failure once, which I like the idea of being interested in failure and having my ads tailored to a sense of my, my kind of self sense of, of failure. So um, we get this kind of interesting amalgamation of relevant ad interests. Um, what I've done here is I've been very selective about how I've chosen what to put on the screen. I'm not gonna pretend that I haven't done that. I have done that. So out of 600, I've chosen these. Part of that reason is because we couldn't sit here. It would be a very boring session if I tried to read out all 600. I think a, a more um, pressing critical point about that is that when you are confronted with these algorithmic profiles, it's incredibly difficult to actually get a sense of holistic selfhood in any way because there's so much, there's so much and it always changes. So this idea that Facebook is tracking you in a holistic way, or is like trying to find your single identity, it's not actually, I would argue, um, it doesn't really reflect what's actually going on here, which is actually the kind of um, infinite dissolu dis dissolution of the, and disaggregation of the self into marketable categories. So the good news is Facebook isn't really interested in exactly who you are, but it is still interested in disaggregating elements of your selfhood to recursively and endlessly resell to, to advertisers. Um, so why should we care about this? Um, I think we've kind of gone through some of the aspects, and but for different kind of audiences, it's useful just to kind of think about the different ways in which ad profiling might affect you. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have the same critical weight as say, you know, the Cambridge Analytica scandal where, um, you know, uh, Facebook was un unintentionally allowing researchers to try and influence elections. That's not really what we're arguing is happening here. I, I don't think the fact that I'm interested in Halloween on Facebook has that same kind of um, overtly political consequence. However, when we take this practice as a whole and we think about what it means to be algorithmically profiled and have this kind of identity configuration that exists in the database um, that does matter for everyday life because for example um, we are valued in our data we are valued both socially um, by Facebook so your data will determine who you see on Facebook and how you are you, the kind of visibility that you have between your friends but your data is also bought and sold by data trackers so um, your algorithmic profile is not just something that affects um, the adverts that you see, it will also affect how you're bought and sold online. And this can have implications for uh, people who are based in a, or categorized as in a low income group. Um, you will then start to be seen, uh, seen ads for say credit cards. So there's, there's a kind of uh, movement and Beverly Skeggs calls this a kind of data underclass. There's a, there's a movement towards segregating um, different incomes into different groups in ways that do affect everyday life. So one of the biggest data trackers is Experian, um, who they are also um, very much interested in whether you're gonna get a, a mortgage or not, because they are credit checkers. So. Um, we're not just reflected in ourselves, but we are influenced by them. So, you know, the type of adverts that you see online, we're not just talking about adverts, we're not just talking about a very clearly demarcated uh, banner ad that flashes annoyingly at you. We're also talking about things like advertorial content. So if you've um, been delivered a article on Facebook from say Buzzfeed or another um, web third party content site, it's sometimes worth just checking whether it's an advert or not because in the digital age of advertising, content matters just as much as the advert itself. So what you see online is also influenced by your advertising profile because the click-throughs that you make may well be a Buzzfeed kind of suggested article that's based on your ad profile. Um, the, another, the, another reason is that data profiles don't always have to be accurate. Um, 
and then that they don't always need to be. So you could be wholly misprofiled by Facebook, um, but in terms of them selling uh, your profile, it doesn't necessarily matter too much. So, um, you know, we need to think about whether what we mean when we talk about accuracy here. And the main reason that we do this, this workshop is to kind of dispel and challenge the myth that data is not is, is scientific. And we're kind of here to say data, in fact, is not always as scientific as it seems. Um, when we look at these kind of um, data profiling sets, um, they are extensive, but also at times crude and simplistic. Um, so thinking about what, what it means to think of data as scientific uh, is, is quite important to us and maybe recode it as data as fun or data as creative. Um, Sophie, do you have any other points to add? Yeah, data is fun, sounds good. <laughs> okay, so what we've got is a bit of a task for, for everyone. Um, what we'd like you to do now is just to spend 10, uh, 10 or so minutes trying to look up one of your ad profiles. Um, so you can do this if you've got a Google um, account, if you've got any kind of Google account. So if you've got a Gmail or YouTube account, then you will have Google ad settings. Um, if you've got a Facebook or Instagram account, what we'd like you to do is try and access your ad settings right now. Um, I've actually put up a, I've got a slide because I wasn't sure um, how easy it would be to to talk about this stuff. So what we'd like you to do is once you get to your ad settings, if you could just make a note of your age and your gender, if it appears, but also some of the interests that stand out for you for whatever reason, it's likely that you'll have quite a lot of interests come up. And yeah, so spend five to 10 minutes doing this. And if you like, you can um, put in some of your interests that have standard, stood out for you in the chat. Um, and what we're gonna do is use these, um, these kind of notes of interest to start to uh, do a creative writing and drawing exercise, but we'll come to that um, after we've done the first bit, which is simply just to access this stuff. So let me just get up this next slide. So this slide should hopefully give you enough to be able to access your Facebook, Instagram, or Google account. Um, if you have any questions, please put, put them in the chat, or if it's easier, you can ask us if you'd like to turn your mic on, and we'll turn your mic on and you can ask us questions. So I'm gonna do my Facebook one on my phone. And I think Sophie usually looks at her Instagram one, but I'm not sure what you're looking at today. Yeah, I'm gonna do Instagram. Instagram I think is the trickiest one. So just let me know if you have any questions uh, in the chat or if, uh, or if you have any questions about any accessing any of these ad settings. But they've changed the Instagram ones recently, so. And yeah, when you go on your ad preference on Facebook, you want to choose ad settings, which is, I don't know if you can see my, you can't see my screen, which is not the first one that you come to, that's advertisers. Then you have ad topics, which is the four that, um, that it should be alcohol, parenting, pets and social issues, election and politics again. So, you know, ping it, ping us a note in the chat if, if, you, if that's not what you see, or if it's, um, or if it is what you see, if you like. And then we've got the ad settings, which is the one we want you to go to on Facebook. Um, when then you go to categories used to reach you and then interest categories. It used to be a lot more simple than this. <laughs> Facebook has uh, really buried it. Um, when, you, when you've done it, maybe like let us know in the chat that you've managed to access something. And like, if you want, like Adam has been telling us that he's got 
some gaming interests, but also in motion aesthetics and arts. So what a guy. Yeah. Lots of games. Yeah. Oh, emotion. I like that one. Yeah. He's a sensitive gamer. <laughs> I've got horseback riding, which I would say I'm not that interested in. Uh, on online advertising, I am interested in that. That's very meta. So it is. Um, Sophie, do you have any ones that you're kind of that are standing out for you today? Uh, so I've got loads of people, like actual, like women's names, uh, which, sorry, I just closed Instagram and I didn't remember that I was in here uh, looking at my other interests. But yeah, it's I've got uh, Isabel Morant, but she's a designer. So I'm, I'm like Googling these people because it's like Ellie Saab, Pawan Kalayan. Junior wannabe. I'm like, who are these women that are my ad interest? Or maybe, or maybe they're not women. Um, but yeah, it's like very fashion because I've been like very much in the Instagram consumption funnel for summer clothes. But I, so yeah, I've got Condé Nast, uh, jewelry, ASOS, but also I have luxury property, new wave music, and uh, four by fours. <laughs> Amazing. I can I can see in the Q and A that we've got some people who are attending. Um, so someone says my interests are quite different: online shopping, role playing games, which is then um, followed by lots of uh, question marks and exclamation marks. So I'm guessing that that's not something that that person kind of identifies with. Mm. Farrah Pharma, cosmetics, and entrepreneurship. And then we've got um, someone else that has bars, clubs, and nightlife, uh, which they find flattering, but not very accurate. Also chemistry, but I also have classical mu music, which is right. Um, so I don't know, can everyone else see that? Adam, could you could you make sure that people can see the, the answers if that's all right? Um, so yeah, we've Great. got interesting stuff coming through. Um, we had a, a an interesting question. Um, we've had it before, which is I don't I use an ad blocker and I don't have any of these accounts. What does that mean? So if you're in that position where you can't find your ad interests, what we would invite you to do is maybe go on to a news website that you follow regularly or something like that um, and look at your look at the advertising. You could also go on YouTube and see if there's any recommended YouTube videos for you. Um, what we're kind of thinking about here is even if you don't have an algorithmic self that is 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 profiled in this way, um, it's likely that you're still being tracked in some sense. Um, so you can make a note of like the kind of advertising that you get, even though you're not being tracked, or um, or just kind of reflecting on the fact that perhaps your algorithmic um, identity is not as as kind of complex as mine is, which is very extensive because I have all of my ad trackers off because of my research, which makes pop-up ads very annoying. Um, yeah. But yeah, so there's, there's, there's different ways to... Um... So our chair, Margareta, she was going to have a look at her so any of her settings. Margareta, I don't know if you've managed to do that. Oh, you're on, you're on mute, you're on mute. Okay, I've, I've managed to find out, so... I, I thought I'd stopped everything. So this is going back to, I have an ad blocker. I use Firefox because it's a, it's a community foundation and not Google. But I now suddenly, rem, you reminded me, I did have a Google account that I, I was hoping I didn't have, but I obviously did, because I think someone set it up for me once. Um, and now I see to my, uh, oh my goodness, it is personalizing ads. I didn't realize it was. So this is all to grist to your point, but I can't find where I, I haven't got as far as finding how they, the list that you're talking about. Yeah. So well, it, it should be on that same page. So if you haven't got the list, it might ne not necessarily exist um, because if you've not logged on for a long time, it might not be very extensive. Right. So I haven't logged on for a long time, but it's just saying ad personalization is on. Right. And then when you scroll down, there's no, there's nothing else, is there? 
Well, there is a huge number of things, but these these are very. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, are, are they your in, are they interest categories? Are they things like hobbies and farming? And it begins with language. It 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 says greetings, cards, moving and relocation, marital yeah. status, married. What? Yeah, yeah. This is all the stuff they this have. Is on it? You. Yes. Yeah. That's what you're looking at. Okay, that's that's distressing. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah we've often found that people yes when when if you delve um deep enough you can normally find these sort of traces of algorithmic subjectivity that you may not um identify with and that's not necessarily a, a bad thing for some people you know some people are very pleased to be misprofiled misprofi yeah um okay so Let's move on. I, I think we've probably had enough time to just reflect on and, and try and access your profiles. Um, if you haven't done so, then, then don't worry. Um, we'll, hopefully we've given you enough time to do that. But if not, you can click on the two links in the chat and um, that this slide, the information on this slide is, is on one of those links. Okay, so let's, let's um, get on to task two of this workshop. So. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on this task because unfortunately um, we don't have the option of sharing um, cameras with everyone. We can only share cameras with our wonderful um, uh, chair and um, some of the other people that are, are kind of uh, part of the festival itself. So um, what we, but still what we would love to do is just to spend a little bit of time drawing a picture of the algorithmic self or the elements of that you've particularly noticed as you've been tracking your ad preferences profile. Um, so some of the things that you might want to think about when you're drawing, drawing your algorithmic self is what are their interests? How can you depict them? What do they look like? If you can tell, are they the same age, gender and ethnicity as you? So um, do you have a gender specified? For a long time on Google, I was a man and I do not identify as a man. So um, I was mis I was, yeah, I was misgendered for a long time. And then one day, annoyingly, I became a woman and I was very annoyed about it because I liked being a man on Google. Yeah. Um, so where are they? Do they have any surroundings? So maybe this is where the interests could come in. Um, if you like farming, uh, if your algorithmic self likes farming, maybe they'll be on a farm. Um, I used to uh, show a previous drawing that I had done, but we've done enough workshops now that I don't have to do that anymore. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a, of a, a taster of some of the other things that people have come up with, um, we've had um, uh, people who have had babies and shopping, people on motorcycles. Um, people have drawn two different types of selfhood. So if you want to go on both your Facebook and Instagram profile, and think about if your algorithmic self is changed on the platform, that can be quite an interesting in, um, exercise. Uh, we've got a baby changing football player there. Um, someone who has <laughs> got antiques and shopping. Um, yeah, so we've got various different sort of snippets. Please do not um, feel that you have to emulate these, but just to give you an idea of the sort of things that people have done in the past. How long should we give for this? Should we uh, say 15? Sorry. 20? I don't know. 15? I think 15 minutes is let's say let's say 10 minutes because <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because then we can hopefully if people want to share their stories, we will be able to do that at the end. And it might be nice to just give ourselves enough time to write and share the stories. So if we yeah. say 10, 10 to 15 minutes for this bit and then perfect. Okay. Yeah. So let the artistic spirit take over. Yeah. Okay, so let me just go back to that previous slide. Um, yeah, so around 15 minutes, please do take the time to draw a picture of your algorithm itself. If you have any questions while we're doing that, just pop them in the chat or um, if you ask, ask, we can put your mic on and you can ask us.
Um, I've just noticed that we've I've been so engrossed in doing my own drawing that I forgot to look at the chat. We've had a uh, was, um, so yes, what we're doing is we are drawing our algorithmic self from the ads that appear to us. That's exactly what we're doing. So if you want to go on your ad settings, anyone that's joined now or joined late, um, if you um, go on your ad settings um, on Facebook or Google, if you if you Google these two things, you should be able to find them because um, we've just been through the instructions. Um, and then what we're doing right now is we're taking a bit of time out just to draw our algorithmic self. So the kind of um, person we think our ad, our ad setting profile reflects. Um, I've just thought of another way that we could share um, the uh, people's pictures if they want to. Um, and that is through our Twitter accounts. So if you've got a Twitter account, if you want to tweet one of us your picture, we would love that. So I'll just put my Twitter in the, um, in the chat. Okay, uh, um, two more uh, minutes. Oh, and if anyone wants to email us, I'm just going to put my email address in the chat as well.
Okay. Let's wrap things up because we've, we've actually only got about half an hour left and we still want to do our writings. Um, so thanks so much, everyone, um, for, uh, for your participation so far. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, um, we can't unfortunately share cameras with all of the participants. So, um, but what I am going to do is um, ask Sophie or Margareta to share their picture or if Adam or Jessica want to as well, who haven't necessarily been singled out to do this, but if they want to share, it would be brilliant. Sophie or Margareta? Well, I, yeah, go, Sophie, you start. <laughs> I'm still finished. Oh, I can't oh. hear you. I just, uh, I'm excited because I treated myself to a whole thing of Sharpies of different colors. So I was like, this is the chance I've got to use them. Um, but I didn't use that many colors. Oh God, how do I, okay. So, so if I stop sharing, everyone should be able to see you now. Okay, cool. Good old speak of you. Um, okay, so I mean, there's just so much random stuff. Like my favorite one that I didn't visualize in this art, in this artistic interpretation is multinational corporation and like metal. So it's very strange. But um, so Isabel Morant, she's a designer, apparently. I've never heard of her, but I've like been going on a lot of small independent fashion brands, like, I don't know, just because bored. And uh, she, and like, I guess she would be in keeping with some of the people that I've been following. Although like, this is like very luxury. I can't afford it. Although it does say that I like luxury fashion. So we've got ASOP, the skincare brand, jazz, but also I had new wave pop, K-pop. Um, for some reason, the Georgia Bulldogs, um, which is a football team, I guess. Uh, and flowering tea and Paris. So these are just like, it's just, it's often very contradictory. Like it, it's just really any kind of genre of music that you could think of. It's, oh yeah, and then also neck, <laughs> why? Um, but yeah, that's, that's me. It's like a, I mean, a lot of it is like fashion and beauty, which is what I use Instagram for. And like, that is where they should be targeting me where I feel at my least great about myself. So I mean, it makes sense. Amazing, thank you. Margareta. Okay. Um, Still finishing, pens unfortunately, down. Unfortunately, you've asked me to do, although, oh, yes, I am, I am, um, I don't like Google, but I do like drawing. So let me just show you how I, um, oh dear, let's try and make it so you can see. Wow. Okay, I was completely shocked having had no idea. You've totally raised my consciousness. Um, so they got a lot of things like school supplies and equipment. That's depressing. <laughs> I mean, I found a, um, a, there's a green stationery. It's an ethical stationery company. And so I have spent quite a while buying, including, you know, things like, uh, re you can actually get recyclable um, things like this. You, 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 you can dip them in an ink pot and you can reuse them, which I, so they've obviously found out um, and they found out what else? I don't know why they think I like cats. I hate cats. Sorry, everyone. Yes, I've looked up business and things, but that's because I'm trying to do an anti-capitalist <laughs> research project. Anyway, I could go on. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. That's fantastic. And yes, um, I, I'm very interested to hear that, you know, you weren't sort of necessarily aware of these things before. So it's it's always it's always good. Um I, I'm gonna share mine because I did uh I I was like yeah just so full of contradictions again. I, I'm a big Trekkie apparently I'm Star Trek and, and like a fantasy so I felt I was a bit of a nerd but then I realized that I was trying to do the Star Trek sign but that's not it is it so my algorithmic self is more of a nerd than my than my actual self, my writing self. The donkey was still there, so I put that in. Um, I like beef and hamburgers, but I'm also like animal rights. And also I had internet privacy and privacy come up as some of the things that I'm interested in. So, you know, like there's, there's some height of irony stuff going on as well. Um, now, because we can't, we'd normally ask other people to share, but we, unfortunately it's quite difficult to do that because of the um, webinar format. Um, so, I, but what we can do is listen to your stories. So I think what we're gonna do is um, move on to the second task. Um, so 
I've already shown you the wonderful artworks that we've been sent before. If you've done an artwork and you'd like to include it in the project um, or a drawing, you know, maybe you don't see it as artwork. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what, how you see it. We would still love to um, include it in the project. So if you can email it to me, that would be fantastic. Um, but no worries if not. So let's get on to the, the task three because we've got about 25 minutes left. So um, what we'd like to do now is um, basically we're not just interested in drawing, but um, writing as a way of engaging with data. So um, we would ask you to um, write a short story, a poem, a play, a piece of prose, whatever you like about a day out with your algorithmic self. So um, this day out can be wherever you want it to be. Um, but the idea is just to, to write a kind of reflection on what would happen if you met your algorithmic self. So some of the prompts that we've um, kind of used before is where did you go for the day? So, you know, what is your algorith algorithmic self interested in? And does that mean that you've gone somewhere? What do they want to do? Mine probably wants to go to a Star Trek convention, I think. Um, what advice would you give them? Do you like your algorithmic self? Are they um, a good or a bad person in your eyes? Um, you know, do, do you think you're going to get along? What, what did you ask them and what did they ask you? And did the two of you meet anyone else? Did you introduce them to your family and friends? Um, what do other people think of them? So yeah, anything, anything you want. There is no, there's no rules as long as it's vaguely about um, the kind of profiling that we've been talking about. Um, so yeah, we're going to spend another 10 to 15 minutes on that. And then that means we've got 10 minutes to listen to, to people's stories um, if they want to share them. I think I've covered everything. Sophie, do I, is there anything else that we need to add? No, I think that's great. Excellent. All right. So yeah, another 10 minutes just to kind of sit in quiet and do a bit of writing by ourselves. And then we'll, 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 we'll reconvene. I've just put a couple of, in, um, of, of kind of uh, examples on the screen again, if people want them, but.
Okay, well, uh, we've got another few more minutes, um, maybe two more minutes just to wrap up our stories and writing. And then we've got 10 minutes to share. Okay, right, pens down everyone. Fun is over, back to the talking bit. Um, okay, so now we should be able to turn people's mics on and off. Um, we would really love it if somebody feels brave enough to share their story with us or what they've written. So if you could just pop in the chat, um, if you are, and we'd love to hear from you. The Q&A, I mean, sorry, not the chat. If you wanna share your picture instead, uh you can we've had some amazing ones on uh we've had one on twitter which was amazing so thank you so much um so uh yeah please please do use that as well if you want to yes you can raise your virtual hand everyone's gone shy We've got someone who's written, my algorithmic self is tricky, nosy, obsessed with online shopping, particularly shoes. She doesn't like to take responsibilities and sometimes tricks me into buying things I don't really need. <gasps> but then she has to be the, but then sometimes she has, but then someone has to be the adult. Sorry, managed to, I'll answer that. So you could, should, so that was a brilliant one. So if, if, if you've got anything else like that, I might have to pick on Margareta again. Hi. Hiya. So, um, I, I, yeah, you, you don't need to look at me actually, do you? I can just read it out. Yeah. Well, I think I'm not sure I quite followed the brief. I, I was, well, I'll read what I've written. When I stepped out one morning, it was in the month of June. I met, met a fair middle-aged stranger who was stepping to my tune. Do you like books and literature, she asked. Why, yes, said I, for sure. And career resources and planning too, said I, yes, many a score. I know you from your flowers, your school supplies and cards. How lovely, said I, as I skipped right by, though she looked at me quite hard. And your home improvement and status, your marital demographic and phone. She smiled still wide as she squashed my bones. And then I ran out of time. <laughs> You were that getting good. to achieve. <laughs> that was amazing. Sometimes yeah. people make like plays, poems, like any in the above is amazing. Anyone else? You don't have to read the whole thing too. You could just read a snippet. I, I'm while well, someone else is getting ready because I'm quite sure everyone's got very fun things I think that um, maybe someone's already done this but a lot could be done with found poetry with the kind of weird mix of the form mm. and the intimate of their language you know 
Google estimates this interest based on your activity on Google services. That yeah. compared to, you know, the kind of, yeah, pets and things like that. <laughs> yeah. And what, no, is it Pippa Thornton who, so she writes poetry and then she puts it all through uh, Google AdSense to evaluate like how much each of the words is worth to advertisers. So she'll, and she'll do that for you where you can uh, give her a piece of writing and she'll tell you how much it's worth to Google. Um, but she sort of plays around with that. And there's a lot, I think you're right. There's so much potential for like, you know, for example, reading like Neck or Tanya got toilet as an ad interest. Like it's, it's very abrupt. And then like some of them are just like super uh, specific and really wordy. Like there's so much that you could do with that. Okay, I've just had someone email me um, with with a bit of uh, a lovely bit of prose. So I don't, in, unless you put in the chat, like it was me, I'm not going to out you in case you don't want to be. So, um, but this is what they've said. Um, it's tricky talking to AI self. They, and they are a they, it seems, veers dramatically from subject to unconnected subject. One minute I'm learning how to fix a, a Belisha beacon the next we're doing 90s pop karaoke. The next moment it's a history of game designer, Yuji Naka. They tell me what Venus in um, Aries means for choosing cat foods. It's like having a conversation with an amnesiac, seems from a life that isn't connected to itself. Amazing. Thank you so much for the person that, that's- So good. Uh, that's wonderful. We've got life. One more minute. Well, yeah, we got one more minute. People feel brave, or yeah, even just like, uh, uh, like just copy paste a little section, like uh, um, Chiamaka did. Uh, I tell you what, um, Jessica said earlier that she'd be happy to share her picture. So Jessica, if that's still the case, would you share with us, or if even if you like, would you share your um? your writing with us. I'll be brave and share my picture. Um, okay. So I've drawn basically what's happening. I don't know if you can see that very well in my social world. The main thing obviously is the festival and I'm really pleased that everyone's engaging. Um, the rest of the time I'm hiding for social from social media. So I've hidden myself here behind this sort of curtain thing um, to try and avoid being distracted from my work. And then I have my PhD realm in this corner here. So different things on the go, lots of text because my artistic skills are not up to scratch today. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. I love it. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to the, the hiding <laughs> desire, but very good. Okay, everyone else, it seems, is feeling a little bit, um, a little bit shy today, and that's okay. Sophie, did you of have course. a chance to read? No. <laughs> Sorry, all of my artistic interpretation went into the went into the picture. Could you just explain again what you meant about the value of words? How how that exactly works? So I mean, so. Google AdWords allows advertisers to bid on certain search terms. So, for example, a search term like student flat in, in Brighton would be a very expensive search term because it's very lucrative. And there's also a lot of advertisers like willing to bid on it, whereas things that are like more specific and niche are, are valued as less. So, for example, like uh, I'm trying to think of something that would be, um, you know, like like just like an obscure gardening tool or like something that, or like maybe a bike part or something like that's not gonna have a lot of interest around it. Um, so it's gonna be worth a lot less. So what I think her name's Pippa Thornton does is she takes, she writes poetry, but she also takes po like poetry that exists, um, like, you know, famous poems or something that you've written and she'll run it through this tool that values how much all of that is worth uh, to advertisers and how much advertisers are willing to bet on it. So they'll she'll tell you the value of your of your art if you were going to like sort of use it all in that way. I've got one of her poems. They're amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, she'll frame like the uh, like the cost of it for you, won't she? As well. Yeah, that's very cool. Does anyone else have any other um, questions for the last couple of minutes that we've got? Any questions or thoughts that have arisen through our little wonder with our algorithmic selves? I mean, I have an immediate. What What are your, you know, top three tips to take control over our you know, if they, if we were in different circumstances, I'd be welcoming the uncertainty of the self, the 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 yeah. you know poetic possibilities of estrangement through autobiographical practice, all sorts of things. But in this case, I want to know how to take back that author authorship and authority. Um, it's a tricky one <laughs> um, because it sounds like you're doing a lot of the things that we would recommend anyway. But yeah, um, downloading ad tracker ad add blockers but also add also tracker blockers so there's a couple there's one called ghostery there's a couple of other ones um which are not the ones that you would get automatically with firefox but you have to go and download them um so they can add that extra level of protection um yeah like stuff like just historically checking through your old profiles um can also be quite useful because you yeah, yeah uh, these things change all the time and it can be difficult to, to keep on top of like what it was the last time you looked. Um, so yeah, going back, which is really tiring and you know, it's really time consuming. So um, there isn't an awful lot. The, the new um, ad settings for like, start looking at your cookie settings again, because more and more there's more flexibility built into the system. So if you are used to just accept accepting the ad cookies, because it used to be you just had to leave the site. Well now actually you can click through and turn a lot of them off. Um, yeah, but I think a, a tracker blocker is probably one of the main things that I would recommend because then you can, like ones like Ghostery, um, which is spelt, I'll just put it in the chat. Um, you can choose site, no, that's, it auto, auto changed it. Oh. I think you um, could also turn your personalization off in Google. Um, which is on the same page as your ad interest. Yes, and we had this question last at the last workshop. And what I did was write, I wrote a blog post about the things that you can do because I, and I was like, we should do a slide at the end <laughs> where we do this. And then I forgot, <laughs> but on, on the research blog where the, uh, where the, um, the other stuff is, we've got a, uh, how to protect yourself. And I can't find it now. Wonderful if you could put that in, maybe in the yeah. Q and A, because I'm not quite sure everyone can see the chat. Yeah. Um, uh, more info. This is the one. Yeah. I think everyone can see the chat because it's a, a attendees and panelists. So hopefully everyone can, but yeah, that just gives you a really few quick um, tip uh, points on what you can do, but yeah, turning off ad personalization um, and also on Facebook, turning off what you can, uh, which is, you know, like these things have got more and more flexibility written in. So there are, there is hope, I think. Um, and the other thing is to bear in mind that, uh, I don't want to be like, it's not as bad as it seems, because obviously it is as bad as it seems, but also the ways in which we think, like um, collectively mobilizing privacy is probably better than just individually trying to track, uh, protect, because it's, that's not, like I, like we've said, um, they not don't really care specifically about who you are. What we need is, is more collective, uh, better privacy legislation, and you know, even things like the outcomes of what of watching us aren't just about privacy invasion, right? So it's about um, fighting for algorithmic equality, you know, fighting um, algorithmic capitalism, data capitalism, those kind of things as well. Okay, that's really brilliant. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we're going to have to wrap up.
Thank you so much, everyone. Um, we are, I'm always so excited to see people's writings and drawings and it fills me with so much joy. And every time I do, we do this workshop, I might, I wanna do more and more and more. So do follow us, uh, follow the project because um, we'll, be we'll be doing more and hopefully we'll start um, at some point publishing some work around any findings we've got around um, what it means to engage with your algorithmic self in this way, so. Thank you so much, everyone. And thanks for chairing and Adam and Jessica for the organization and obviously Sophie as well. Thank you. It was great to hear some stories and see your pictures. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks everyone. Thanks.